our community. Fellowship of Faith Church, where we are under the leadership of Pastor Robert I. Dixon II. We thank you so much for joining us on this morning online for our first time online visitors and guests. We thank you so much for choosing North Shore as your viewing today. We ask that God will bless and pour down his Holy Spirit on this day as we worship him in spirit and in truth. God bless you and thank you for joining North Shore Community Fellowship of Faith Church.
trust in you I will trust in you I will trust in you Lord in you Lord just sing that with us I will trust in you. In, in you, Lord, I will trust. In you, Lord, I will put my trust in you. Stay right there. I will trust.
find your place of worship this week. Find your place of worship. I will trust. Lord, I made up my mind. My faith lies in you. Yes. Watch this. Watch this. Trust means I let go. Trust means I surrender. I will trust. I'm not trying to figure it out. I'm not trying to see my way through. Lord, I just trust you. Can we say it one more time? I will try. No matter what the circumstance. No matter what the obstacles I face. This is a good time to just pray over it right now. Whatever it is, whatever it is. Whatever it is that I'm facing. Whatever it is that I'm going through. Whatever challenges I'm up against right now. This is the time. Sing it softly. I will trust. I will my trust in you. Right now, just begin to cover whatever it is. You may be interceding for a loved one. You may be covering a loved one right now that that's trying to hold on, that's trying to go through, that's trying to push. Whether they're in your home physically, whether they're in the hospital room right now. We bless your name, Lord. We want to say, Lord, I trust you. I will trust. We want to say that I trust you. We want to say, Lord, we trust you. Just begin to pray, lift up right now. You may be stepping into something new in your life. Stepping into something that God has already ordained and you're saying, Lord, I don't know how. I don't know how, Father, that I'll make it through. I don't know where the resources will come from, but yet, God, I trust you. Yet, God, I trust you. I've made up my mind. I made up my mind, God, that, Lord, I'm not going to try to fix it or figure it out, but, God, I trust you. I put my trust in you. So, Father, we pray over, Lord. We pray over your people today, God. We pray over, Father, that which we're facing even right now, God. Even in the midst of a pandemic, God, you show yourself faithful. Even in the midst of lack, you show yourself faithful. Even in the midst of a time, Father, where we don't know the answer, we put our trust in you. God, we pray this morning that, God, you continue to take the lead, Father, which means that we have to surrender, which means that we have to let go, which means that we don't have worry, we're not anxious, but, God, we seek ye first your kingdom and your righteousness and all these things, whatever is needed, whatever you have for us, whatever provision, all these things will be added unto us. And so, God, we trust you right now. God, we trust you right now. We trust you in sickness. We trust you in a time of chaos. We trust you when racial tensions are high. We trust you, God, when we're facing obstacles that we can't move. We trust you, God, when we don't have as much as we need. We, we trust you, God, when lack is all around us. That, God, you have been faithful. God, you've been promising. God, everything that you've already spoken into existence, it shall come to pass. So, Father, we let it go this morning. We let it go right now, God, to say have your way in our lives. Have your way in our homes. Have your way in the family. Have your way in the sick room. 
Have your way right now, God. We turn it over to you. We turn it over to you. Then even right now, as we prepare for worship, as we prepare to go before you in worship, God, we need you today, God, to speak a word into our lives. A bold word, Father. A suddenly word, Lord. A right now word today. That God, as we hear and receive, God, you will stir up in us, Lord. The faith that is needed to step out, Lord, on the word that you have promised. So we thank you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 Bless these powerful praise singers and musicians. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Robert I. Dixon. For those that don't know and for those that do, I thank you for chiming in, tuning in. Uh, I'm excited about this series, this word that God has given us today. I'm excited about once we apply that word, what that word will do in our lives. And so I'm not going to delay, but if you have your Bibles, your iPads, your, 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 your devices that you would use, go to 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel. Fifth chapter in 2 Samuel. For those that are looking, it is in there. Second Samuel, fifth chapter, starting with the first verse. And it simply reads, Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and, say, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, Saul was king over us. Thou wast he that led us out and brought us in, e in, in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron, and the king David, King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old and when he began to reign and he reigned for 40 years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months and in Jerusalem he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went out to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither. Thinking David cannot come in hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same is the city of David. And David said on that day, whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jebusites and the lame and the blind, that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Wherefore they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. Watch this. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. And David went on and grew great. I want you to see this. And the Lord God of hosts was with him. For a moment this morning, I just want to talk about the power of vision. The power of vision. Lord, bless the hearers, the readers, and the doers of your word. Bless the vessel that will pour out that, Lord, you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The power of vision, vision, vision. 
Today I want to examine the life of David. The life of David and of Israel to distinguish similarities between David's vision and the vitality of your own. George Barna wrote that theologians and the scholars describe David this way. David, who became the second king of Israel, was described as a man after God's own heart. Or to put it another way, David was a man who grasped God's vision for his life. I want you to see this. David was human to say the least, and it's because of his humanistic qualities and characteristics that, that we, can, we can relate, we can connect with David because the life of David teaches us and shows us that he was prone to make mistakes. Not only did he make mistakes, but he had some mess ups in his life. He had some mishaps that, that he had to, to get past. But one of the redeeming qualities in his life was his desire to remain true to the vision or future which God had promised. Ah. Let's talk about this word vision for a second because I want us to see the word vision uh, simply means uh, vision is a dream uh, inebriated by imagination. It's the dynamic imagination that has the power to change the present reality, shift the information from the past, and propel one towards promise. Vision. I never forget growing up, uh, there was a show that we used to watch as kids, Thundercats. Some of us remember Thundercats, Lino, Panthro, Wiley Cat, Wiley Kitten, Chitara, Thundercats, Roar. And, and, and when Lino and the group got into uh, 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 a certain challenge we're facing certain challenges he would hold up his sword and say give me sight beyond sight vision give me sight beyond sight it was then that he had the ability to see those things that he was about to walk or enter into and he was given sight to see it before he would face it in his life so vision is a dynamic imagination that has the power to change your present reality, shift the information from your past, and propel you towards God's promise. There's a unique power attached to God's vision for your life, and we want to explore the power of vision. Well, the first thing I want you to see is vision always provides a call for us to focus. Vision provides a call for us to focus. David was a man of vision. 2 Samuel 2, 5, 3 through 5, it tells us and it shows us something here. We, say, we see David now is anointed as king, but understand that he was anointed for the ter third time as king. I want to take you back because notice David's patience. First, he was privately anointed by the prophet Samuel. We saw that in 1 Samuel 16, 13. Scripture says that after David was anointed, he went back to tending sheep. Can I encourage somebody sometimes because you may not be where you desire to be in life. You may not be where your anointing has proven for you to be, but don't despise small beginnings. Because when you begin to see that David was anointed out of eight brothers, he was the last one to be called. When he was anointed, then he went back to tend to the sheep. Can I ask you a question? What do you do when God puts your greatness on hold? 
Watch this. David had the courage. He, he had what it took. He fought the lion and the bear while tending the sheep. He fought the giant Goliath with a slingshot and put the Philistine army to rest with the Lord on his side. But he wasn't ready yet. And sometimes we see that that vision that God has given us, that anointing that he has placed on us, we want to rush God, but God puts us in a holding pattern because he knows that we're not ready yet. So we see David had to learn the meaning of patience. Can I deal with it for a second? Because sometimes we can be become so overly anxious to operate in God's anointing but but know this that whatever God has for you he'll hold it until you're ready for it has God ever held a blessing for you something that you saw it he gave you vision for it but but he had to hold it long enough for you to step into it so we see David's patience but also we see and notice the process there's always a process. Second, he was made king over the tribe of Judah after King Saul and his son Jonathan's death. Now I want you to understand something. I'm in 2 Samuel now, the second chapter, fourth verse, because this had to produce the character it, that was needed for him to step into a kingly position. What do you mean by that pa a pastor? He had to have character. Scripture again states in 2 Samuel 1, 11 through 16, he mourned the loss of King Saul. This, this, this was the same man that wanted him dead. Then he killed an Amalekite, the man that brought him the news that King Saul was out into battle. battle. The Philistines were coming up against him. And as he lay on his spear, Saul looked up, called him over and said, kill me now. And when he brought the information back to David, what we found is that David immediately began to mourn because God's anointed had been slain. I want you to understand something. Now God was preparing him for his greatness. Because any time you step into the greatness that God has called you to, you have to understand it takes character. It takes integrity. Watch this. Now David can begin to see the path to God's promise. Here's what came to me. What is it that God has to kill or allow to die before you can enter into the promise that he's prepared for you? Oh, somebody's not getting it right. Let me say it again. What is it in your life that God has to kill or has to allow to die before you can enter into what he's already promised. If God doesn't kill it, it will either kill us or we will kill the blessing. Some things we're not ready for that we've been asking God for. Some things we can't handle that we've been asking or praying for. And we have to understand that God has to prepare us so we won't mess it up. Could it be that God is repositioning some things in your life that were out to destroy you? Hmm. Things that were lying wait to, to, to take you down as God was trying to lift you up. So you must endure the process. Then there's a third thing right here, the same text. We, we have to understand this. Watch the promotion. Watch the promotion. Finally, David was anointed and crowned king over all Israel. Second Samuel 5, 3 says it this way. So all the elders came to the king of Hebron and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over all Israel. Israel. Here's what came to me. Because we see patience plus preparation leads to promotion. Can I say it again? We see patience plus preparation leads to promotion. I can't rush God. I know it's there. But I can't rush God. 
And so God puts me in a holding pattern. While I'm in a holding pattern, he has to prepare me for the assignment. He has to take some things off of me that I picked up along the way. He may have to humble me at times for me to understand that before I exalt you, I got to take you low. But he, he, he gives me patience and then preparation. And then once I'm ready, he'll lead me into promotion. The devil can't take from you what God has already promised because God will hold that blessing until you're ready to step into it. Can I tell you that this is where the encouragement comes? Hold on to your vision. Because what the devil will do along the way is try to kill your vision or kill your faith to believe that it shall come to pass. Just because you haven't gotten there yet doesn't mean that God still hasn't promised it in your life. So we see that, that now we transition to the second point. Vision dominates all your inner conversation. Vision dominates your inner conversation. Look at 2 Samuel 5 and 6. The Bible says, And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David could not come hither. Understand once, uh, 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 2 Samuel Five, six, one can imagine how the Jebusites taunted David that he could never take their city. The walls, you have to understand, were too far above the valley. The gates were too formidable and the location was forbidding. But notice the more they said you will not get in here, even the blind and the lame can ward you off what they were saying is now he's down in the valley and he has to go up the mountain and they don't even have to have the type of protection that was normally needed that our blind and our lame can keep you from coming in so the more they said it the more David drove himself to do what they said that he couldn't do can I tell you something today you may have people that's blind to your, your anointing. You may have people that's blind to what God has placed in your life. But I dare you to encourage yourself and say, self, I'm not going to let somebody that can't see the anointing on me keep me from stepping into God's promise. I'm not going to allow somebody that's crippled and lame and they don't have what it takes on the inside to keep me from God's promise. If I don't talk to anybody else, I'll encourage myself. I wish I had somebody today. Watch this. Watch this. Great vision always dominates the leader's inner conversation. What are you saying to yourself? I had to learn to encourage myself. Self, you're better than that. Self, there's promise over your life. Self, you got to get rid of some things. Self, you got to step out of some things. What kind of conversation are you having with you? I'm just talking for a while. I want you to see that every worthy vision dominates the leader's conversation. Can I say it again? Every word, every vision that's worthy, every vision that has value will dominate your conversation. Everywhere I go, I ought to be talking about my vision. I ought to be telling somebody about my vision. I ought to talk about it through the day where people can tell me better than I can tell them what my vision is all about. So what kind of conversations are you having within you? That's why you have to stop placing your dreams in the hands of fanatics. Okay, 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 okay. I missed you with that one. You got to stop placing your dreams in the hands of fanatics because a fanatic is nothing more than a fan, one who merely is a passionate admirer. But you find out about a fan, one day you're on a high and they're cheering your name. 
the next day when you're on a low and you're not doing it and you have to grind to get it done, they're talking about you. Well, they wasn't going to do it anyway. Uh, I, I, I knew that they weren't going to make it that far. I knew that once they did it, they, they were, they were going to come up against obstacles and quit. But, but here's what I understand because the problem with a fan is as soon as they replace a simple vision with, a, with their modified agendas, now they're not on the team anymore. Can I talk to somebody today? Because I don't need fans around me. I, I don't need fanatics around me. I need to center myself around people who can see what God has promised, not only for my life, but for their life as well. Here's what I had to ask myself. Do you have the right people connected to your vision or are you surrounded by spectators? Hmm. Visionaries. Visionaries. Have you invested in the vision that God has for the kingdom? Have you invested in the vision that God has for the church? Have you invested in the vision that God has for the ministry? Have you invested in the vision that God has for your family? Have you invested in the vision that God has for your life? Do you have the right people connected to your vision? Or are you surrounded by spectators? The last thing and we're done. Vision inspires greatness. Verses 7 through 10 tells us, but I want you to see verse 10. Notice, and he became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. Let me say it this way. It says in the text, so David dwelt in the fort, excuse me, verse 10, and David went on and grew great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. David's vision inspired images of greatness. Oh, okay, okay. David's vision inspired images of greatness. Ernest Becker said it this way in his book, The, the Denial of Death. People in our society deny their own death by taking one of two courses. Watch this. They either become a hero and live on after they are dead. Mm -hmm. Or they attach themselves to the very strong heroes and rise above their littleness. Okay, okay. I either become a hero and my life lives on once I'm dead. Or either I attach myself to heroes and, and I begin to rise above my own littleness. The Bible said, and the Lord God was with them. If the visionary was blessed, then that means those connected to the visionary were blessed. You don't have to wait till you get to the grave to be great. All you got to do is be to connect it some, with somebody that has greatness on. Okay. Uh, you don't have to wait till you get to the grave to see vision or see your dreams finally work out. All you got to do is connect to somebody that's doing what you're doing. And as they begin to walk in, 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 in vision and walk in promise, you begin to see that your steps begin to change and stretch out. Can I talk to somebody today? Because notice they didn't burden the vision with small-minded people. But they came together as a people. No matter what the odds were, no matter what the challenges were, they looked up at that city. And if David said that they could take it, if God told David that they could take it, they got together themselves and they took what belonged to God. Can I talk to you this morning? Because you don't have to fret about what's coming against you. If God said you could do it, all you have to do is have the faith to say, Lord, I'll take it because it belongs to you. I'll take it because you've already promised it. I'll take it because you've already said it to be so. Can I talk to you for a second? Because small-minded people can't swim in deep waters. That's what I love about God. 
is because when he begins to elevate you, he has to remove the small-minded people, small-minded thinkers, small-minded conversation, small-minded naysayers. He says either they get stuck on the shore and left behind. Uh-oh, here's an aha moment. That means everybody can't go with you. Some people are gonna get stuck and left behind. Small-minded thinkers, small-minded believers, small-minded conversationalists, they have to learn how to swim, which means that some people will slow you down. Some people will hinder you from getting there. Small-minded thinkers, small-minded conversation, small-minded believers, some of them will even drown. You don't have time to reach back, pull somebody out, because I'm focused on God's vision, which means that everybody can't handle the deep. Everybody can't swim in deep waters. Can I holler for a second? Because there's power in God's vision. There's power connected to God's vision. If I just hold on, God said, you're about to step into it. 2020, you haven't met my God yet. I'm about to step into it. 2020, the devil is alive. I'm about to step into it. I made it this far, which means I made it through January. I made it through February. I made it through March, April, and May. Devil tried to hold me in June, but God said, get back up, because I got promise for you. Devil, you're alive. I made it through the storm. I made it through sickness. I made it through the challenges. And now I'm in September, saying I'm about to step into it. I'm about to step into it. I'm about to step into it. You have vision all around you. For the last time, tell somebody, call somebody, text somebody, and tell them, I got vision, I got anointing, I got faith, and it's all over me. I'm like David. If I gotta tend to the sheep, it's on his way. If I gotta run from persecution, it's on his way. But when the time comes, God said, now you're ready. Now you're ready. The vision, it's already done. The vision, it's already done. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can't handle your deep. And so we see something. We see something. If God gave it to you, hold on to it. Because it's coming to pass. There is power in God's vision. No, sure, there's power in God's vision. Whether it be for the church, for the ministry, for your personal life. There's power in God's vision. There's power. And here's what I love about it. You can't overlook it. There's a last piece you can't overlook. The Bible says in verse 10, and David went on and grew great. Why? Because the Lord God of hosts was with him. The reality of your vision is determined by your relationship with God. The reality of your vision is determined by your relationship with God. The devil can't take it. So right where you are, I want you to begin to pray, God, am I in right relationship? Have I missed some things in my life because I'm out of alignment? Because God, I don't want to waste time any longer. I don't want to waste time any longer, God. The reality 
of my vision is that I'm in right relationship. It's determined that I be in right relationship with you. So God, I surrender. I surrender my agenda. I surrender my plan. I surrender right now. I surrender right now. This is a time of confession. This is a time of surrender. This is a time of commitment. I surrender right now, Lord. So where you are today, some of you might be on your knees right now in your home. It's all right. Some of you might be laying prostrate right now in your home. It's okay. Because that means, Lord, I humble myself before you. I humble myself to know and, Lord, to live in that which you've already promised in my life. So as we pray, because watch this, it starts with right relationship. If you haven't accepted Christ and Lord as, your, as, as Lord and Savior, here's your moment. Here's your time. I wouldn't have a testimony that I had today. I wouldn't have that testimony if I hadn't let go and say, God, here it is. God, here it is. God, here it is. I'm tired of running. I was running. I was running. I'm tired of running. And the further I would run from God, the more I was facing, the more he brought me down. He brought me to a place where he gave me a choice. Either you're going to live for me or you can let it go and end your life now. And so I challenge you today. I had to surrender. Here's what I'm offering you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart come into my life I surrender my life to you fully, completely I let go God of the old things, the old desires I don't want to be there anymore, I don't want to do that anymore but God I open my heart today because I'm desperate I'm desperate Lord you know that I know that I'm desperate so I open my heart today and say Lord come in come in, come in Take over, take control. And in my surrender, God, I believe that, Lord, you, you died to save me. You died to save me. You rose to break every chain. And even you've spoken over my life because my life has value. So we pray over you today. Then we pray over those that are saying, I want to recommit my life to Christ. I want to totally surrender my life to Christ. You may have been off doing some wilding out in your own life. But here's the thing, that while you have time, while you're still breathing, make the commitment today. Make the commitment today. Then there are those that are saying, but, but I don't have a covering. I don't have a covering. And, and, and yet, here's my plea to you. I surrender myself and I'm here to serve you. Which means that if you're looking for a covering, a church covering, a pastor that can speak and help you, bend toward you, if you're looking for others to walk with you, this is what I've been called to do, to mentor, to walk with those. Because once you are saved, you need somebody to walk with you along the way. You need to be able to pick up the phone and say, Pastor, I can't make it. I, I, I'm going through too much. I need your help. And, and that's what God's man is called to do, to mentor you along the way. So if that's you today, we invite you to become part of this ministry. There's an inbox on Facebook. There's an inbox on our North, North Shore page. This inbox me and just let me know I'm ready. I need you, Pastor. I'm ready to make the commitment. And as we pray over God's word, Father, we thank you. Let your word stand. Let your word and, and the promise of your word be glorified in our lives, manifest in our lives, that we can walk in that anointing that you've placed over us. We thank you now. That supernatural favor, we thank you now. That's why the enemy couldn't kill us. We thank you now. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Keep that going right there. I'm, I'm sorry, we, we got a place of worship.
Somebody say, it is so. Come on, you ought to shout it out. It is so. Yes, it is. It is so, it is so If you believe it, say it is It is so in your life, say it One more time, it is so, I believe it Yes, it is so He will do just what Right to vision. Right to vision. Yeah, yeah. Right to vision. Write it out, write it out. Right to vision. You gotta believe that whatever is written, whatever he gives you, it's going to come to pass. I wrote vision out at the beginning of 2020. I'm already walking in it. I'm already walking in it. God says, I'm proving my word. I'm proving what I gave you. I'm proving it's coming to pass. Hallelujah. One more time. Write the vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He will do. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. You ought to praise. Lift those hands. I'm sorry, we 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 are not cool for right now because because something has broken out in this place. You ought to lift your hands and tell God, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Come on, somebody. Where you are, you might as well take your time to praise. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, you might as well go higher. Devil can't stop it. Devil can't stop it. Tell the Lord, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. You might as well clear some room in your house. Let the devil know. Let God know. Hey, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Walking in it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Step on it. Step on it. Kick it down. Let the devil know. You can't stop me. You can't hold me. You can't hold me. Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, put your hands together. I told you we have a church up in here. Somebody may have missed it, but you might as well praise it.
blessing, every promise, everything that the enemy tried to kill, steal, and destroy, God says it's already yours. For I came that you may have a life and have it more abundantly. I'm ready for abundance. I'm ready for abundance. I'm ready. God, I'm ready. I surrender. I surrender. Now let it go and say, God, have your way. Let's go ahead. We, we'll close it out right here.
holy name. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's power in vision. Yeah. where you are, I want you to to get the sacrament together as we prepare to receive our communion today. That vision, that vision is based upon the reality of your relationship with God. And those that have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, in their lives, in their hearts. This is a time that we acknowledge that the, the bread is the broken body or symbolizes the broken body of Jesus Christ. It was in our brokenness that he proved himself first. And in his sacrifice, he says in his word, take, eat ye all of it. And then likewise, the blood represents and is symbolic to the blood of Jesus that was shed to wash away all, every one of our sins. The Bible says, take and drink ye all of it. For as often as ye eat of this bread, drink of this cup, do show the Lord's death until he come again. Amen. I'm going to dismiss these singers. I'm going to dismiss these singers. And as we're coming to the conclusion of our service, we don't want to leave today without honoring God with our gifts. God has been faithful, if God has blessed you through this time and this season, he just only requires that we give back to him a portion of what he's given, already given to us. And so giving is another form of worship that we should be excited over because all of us, and I know I have the testimony of times that I did not have, and God provided for my life. So it's when I became obedient and say, Lord, okay, I'll be pastor. I'll go past a $20 giver. I'll go past a $40 giver. But Lord, I will be a tither. I will be faithful. Whatever comes into my hands, whatever goes through my house, God, I'm giving you a tenth of it first, Lord, and an offering, Lord, to show you that, Lord, I believe in the seed that I'm sowing. And I believe in the ground in which it's being sown. I believe in the one who I'm giving it to. I'm giving it to you, God. And so, God, we bless the gifts today. If you're going to the cash app, this is your time. This is your time. Cash app us at dollar sign North Shore Community Church. Or North Shore Church. Excuse me, dollar sign North Shore Church. It's up on the lower third of the screen. But we want to continue this ministry. And as we close out today, Father, we thank you for your spirit moving in this place. We thank you right now, God, that, Lord, your word is proven and evident in our lives. God, I pray over your people that we continue, Lord, to to look to you to take the lead. Your word tells us, look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from he who made heaven and earth. And everything is under your feet, Father, and we trust you. 
So keep us, God. Protect us, Lord. Heal us where healing is needed. Cover us, Lord, where the enemy's trying to take us out. God, I pray over this church, God. I am, I'm excited about the day when you will say that we can come in and corporately worship you together. So cleanse the house. Cleanse the house, God that when we come in, God, we will fall to our knees in repentance and pray for, Lord, your cleansing in our lives. So we thank you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Band, can y'all play us out? Can y'all play us out? Bless his holy name, come on. Bless his heart. Bless his heart.